I purchased this Interstate 13-piece R8 collet set with tool tray from Enco, and uh, that particular tray, although it's advertised as attached, being able to be attached to any milling machine with two screws, uh, I didn't really see a good way to mount it to my Enco machine that I have. Uh, if you'll see the tray here. It's got ears on here that are angled at an odd angle. It's not even like at a 45 or anything, and has two holes in there, and they supply um, machine screws to go into your machine. So even people that have a bridge port, which I think this is designed for, um, have to drill and tap two holes. So I, I like the kit, but I've decided that I'm going to have to modify it in order to mount it on a cabinet next to my machine. So I wanted to share with you how I'm going to do this and uh, maybe you can benefit from it. Thank you. I thought of producing this video as an afterthought after I'd already cut the ears off of this um, collet tray. The ears are located right here and right here. And you'll see here that I've mounted it to a backboard of MDF and I put in screws all around here and through that hole and over here and again over here in four places and then you have to kind of do that to stabilize this when you cut through it otherwise that could shift on you and cause you a problem on your saw. The, uh, this is made out of cast aluminum. I tested it first with a magnet just to make sure before I put it on my saw and uh, then I also screwed it to the backboard over here. I put some large washers and screws down into that backboard so that when I run this against the fence of my table saw nothing's going to shift on me. If it shifts, you could have a real problem. You might get a kickback or something like that. So be careful about that. What I'm using is the Starrett uh, multi-purpose uh, lubricant. And what that does, it gives you a much cleaner cut and it runs more smoothly through the material. Set the blade height so that it just barely cuts through the material so you don't have too much excess blade coming up above this point. Of course, like with any operation, make sure that you've got a push stick and then you stand out of the line of fire whenever you push something like this through the, through the table saw. I always wear a face shield when I operate them on my machinery, especially on a table saw or lathes or mills or anything. Uh, my eyes are precious to me and I'm sure yours are too, so make sure that you have a good, good face shield. This one's made by Bionic. I find that I really like this one a lot. It tends to protect my throat a little bit more if something came up too. It's in my chin and my throat area. Once you've completed the cut along here, then you're going to end up with the ears on the scrap piece and then the collet tray on the larger piece here, still secured with the screws down to this piece of MDF. These I've got you can see I've got four screws in there to keep it stabilized and keep it from moving while I was cutting it. Um, this is going to be thrown away, but this side over here, I'm going to drill some holes in it so that I can make a bracket and mount it to the side of my cabinet, and thus I'll have access to these, uh, this tray and the collets that will be in it, and uh, I'll show you that part next. Thank you. Let's see, the width of what remains of the tray comes out to about 10 inches, so I'm going to cut a piece of 2x4, just some scrap 2x4, to about 11 inches, so i got a little bit that sticks out each end. I've now got the scrap piece of 2x4 that I cut to 11 inches long. This is 10 inches wide, and so I'm just going to be screwing it down to that surface on the edge of the board with two fairly heavy duty screws. I'm going to just drill down through this plate in two places. I wouldn't push too hard because it is a cast aluminum part. Again. So I've just installed one screw here. Notice that I put a washer on here as well. And that's so that uh, we take a chance, don't want to take a chance of cracking this casting. Over here, I've got the other screw ready to go down in here. I pre-drilled the holes down here so I don't have to put excessive pressure on the screw head when I'm putting these in. These are pretty long screws. Okay, I've completed the mounting now. I'm on the inside of the cabinet here. On this wall, 
I placed the quarter inch piece of plywood. It's got melamine on one side, just so what I happen to have handy. These screws now, with the washer on them, have a much larger, larger distribution area for the pressure that may be on it from the other side. I didn't want to take a chance of these screw heads pulling through the cabinet wall because the cabinet's just a you know three quarters of an inch thick or so of uh, MDF that's covered in some kind of plastic. Now you can see where the uh, collet tray's been mounted on the wall of that cabinet and I've mounted it low enough so that I can see the tops of each one of the R8 collets which is where the increments are marked but if you look if you look right here, this is where I put a screw down through into the 2x4 here and one over here. And it's plenty strong now and it's in a good convenient location for me. I hope you got something out of this. Um, Don, I am Don Geiger. Uh, my website is geigerssolutions.com. Geiger spelt just like the Geiger counter. Thank you.